Hello guys and welcome to yet another video on European based bird watching and well you thought I was a football YouTuber Nah nah never, I, I've actually never been interested in football I don't even know where you got that sort of information Nah guys honestly I will keep it so so honest with you Any sport right now better than football at this point Oh how devilishly daunting But you speak the same as me as well How captivatingly convenient That is remarkably reminiscent bombastically benevolent The FA Cup this week has provided some Prime Emirates Entertainment, unless you're a Liverpool fan, in which case it's provided prime depression. I am running out of energy. As with a game in the Reds' grasp with just five minutes of normal time to go, an already sensational match for the neutrals sparked into life even further. With a late equaliser from Anthony, long-range deflected strike from Harvey Elliott, redemption from Marcus Rashford, before a buzzer beater from United youngster Ahmad Diallo. You could really say Diallo done a madness in this one. You get it, obviously, because that's his first name. I fucking knew there was a reason I watched HITC 7s instead of this guy. The script writers honestly have done up an entire screenplay here. This 120 minutes were enough to pad out an entire eight season Netflix series fam. As with Ahmad Diallo cementing a cult status legacy he was given a red card for taking his shirt off and being given a second yellow only to walk down the tunnel praised as a hero by fans from either side. It was a truly mental image. Lived it Loved it. And was heading back to the changing rooms for a hero's welcome, only to realise the rest of the players were still out on the pitch. First it was NHS Martial, now it's Ramadan Diallo that's really elevated his game to the next level. Now if you're looking at me and thinking, Nero, you don't actually look upset enough given the circumstances. You know, Liverpool are out of the FA Cup at the hands of our most bitter rivals in one of the most dramatic fashions and most dramatic games you're going to see all season. And that's because, ladies and gentlemen, coping mechanism. Just laugh through the pain. Things will get better eventually. All just lie. Fuck it. I w I've always been a Rotherham United fan. I've never been a Rotherham United fan. We're actually out of the FA Cup at the hands of Victor Lindelof. From the moment I saw Jurgen Klopp looking like this, I knew it was Kalas. This guy uses what I said a second ago, laugh through the pain. So when we're losing and he's depressed as well, it's game over. And of course, with our exit from the FA Cup here, the chance of a legendary quadruple once again is over. Ironically, ladies and gentlemen, we will not be winning the lot. No, genuinely, seriously, someone slap away that days on lie. instead. The fairy tale end for Jurgen Klopp has in fact been ruined. Of course, leaving at the end of the season and there will not be another trip to Wembley between now and the end of his reign at the Reds. The finish to Jurgen Klopp's story now, looking a lot different than it was supposed to. Well, that's the end then of the Premier League season. And uh, let's say he didn't take things well on Scandinavian television when being questioned by a reporter at full time. Disappointed about that question, but you thought obviously it's good to obviously not in a great shape and I have no nerves for you. I have a question talking about, are you really, what's, what's wrong with you? Has he just called this Don overweight? Look, listen, Jürgen, I, I love you, mate, but this seems like overstepping the mark. It's fair to say Jürgen went way too far with his further off-the-record quotes after the interview. Look at the size of that fucker. Bro said he needs one of Liverpool's asthma pumps when he runs down the touchline. Insinuated that this Don's heat map is about as blank as Maurizio Pochettino's trophy cabinet. Honestly, the whole situation, heavy. And that's just the reporter. No, genuinely, this, this can't run. You can't be doing that, Jürgen. If there's one criticism that I do have of Klopp, and all managers do it, right? Mikel Arteta gets grief for it. Eric Ten Hag has been guilty of it as well this season. He can just, it's major head loss on a regular basis. So he does have a lot of complaints that I do agree with in terms of match scheduling and stuff. Opponent fans are often very quick to criticize him because he might come across salty. And I think sometimes he does come across salty. This is just, fam, his whole head, neck, and shoulder area is on Jupiter. And if you thought Jürgen was bad with this reporter, just imagine how bad things are going to be when the Liverpool documentary team ask him how this defeat's going to affect him and his wife's relationship. <laughs> now, if I'm Jürgen, I wouldn't have had certain performances from a few of his players as well. I'll go into it in a bit more detail, but we really did throw the game away here. Defensively, at times, shocking, and we conceded four goals, for fuck's sake. Virgil van Dijk got outplayed by Harry Maguire, and you expect me to still watch this sport. Mo Salah substituted off was getting heckled by Manchester United fans at full time and one man that should have been getting heckled was Cody Gakpo. That was shit. <laughs> 
I've seen the light, guys. I'm going to be honest. There's been rumblings of this before. And I watch him, and he frustrates me in the final third. But now, I've, I, he's taking the biscuit at this point. This brother looks like he's running through treacle when he's on the ball trying to start a counter-attack. If I'm Jurgen Klopp on a fine Cody's contract lying about in the manager's office, there's only one thing I'm doing to that tomorrow. I'm telling you now, I want this man playing for Shanghai Shenhua by sunrise. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. It won't be long before you're playing point guard for the Wang Dong Tigers. As I said, when when on the ball for a counter, just in final third situations, the guy has just no decision-making ability. He's got the movement and stiffness of somebody that's got up to go have a piss on a flight, and now they're trying to get back to their window seat through the middle of other people. And if it was actually humane to do so, I would have dragged him off, even though he was a substitute. Fuck that. I don't even care if it's humane or not. He's getting hooked 15 minutes in, and I don't even mean as a substitute. I mean a right hook. But for Manchester United, and there were storylines here as well. They took the lead, Liverpool remontade back to 2-1, only for Anthony, of all people, to turn up in the FA Cup again and grab an all-important equaliser to take it to extra time. Now, obviously, I've been very harsh on Anthony throughout his time at Manchester United. A couple of videos about him, and I think it's deserved. For, you know, 80 to 100 million, the guy has done absolutely nothing. But in fairness, this finish was absolutely unreal. The fact that we have allowed this brother to fidget spin his way to glory genuinely makes makes me upset. The fact he actually scored on the spin. I mean, it was never going to be any other type of goal, was it? On his right foot. We deserve to be liquidated, let alone eliminated from the tournament. And Eric Ten Hag will be grateful to his former Ajax man for getting him out of trouble and keeping him in the United job. For Ten Hag here, he's genuinely cooked. And for once, it's not crystal meth. The guy is a completely different entity in the FA Cup. He actually kind of makes things happen, I'm not going to lie. Some of the formations, though, that I see United run during counter movement right when they just lost the ball and then you know they're having to charge back and defend yet is actual terrorism no i don't know how they were allowed to get away with it during the course of this match i don't know how they were allowed to get away with the fact bruno fernandez spent the final 10 minutes playing at center back anthony was at left back bro they had two defenders on the pitch and we were the ones getting counter attack another man that had a turbulent afternoon was marcus nyashford his first 90 minutes he might have been a secret agent because there are a couple poor misses there but guys he had a chance to wrap this game up at 2-2 with the last kick of normal time. I was traveling from somewhere to home at the time and I was watching it on my phone. Time actually stood still as I saw him like open his body up. I was like, yeah, we're done. It's Galas. Only for him to slot it wide, his highlights, a catastrophe. It's no real surprise. Eric Ten Hag had some stern words for him, threatening to scrap the ball out at full time. Right! Changing rooms! I'm gonna deal with you! But then, of course, into extra time, he grabbed the all-important equaliser to make it 3-3. Spurred on by... Wait, hang on a sec. Is that Mason Mount? <laughs> You're alive. I can't believe it. Someone said you was dead. Christian Eriksen had a heart attack three years ago. And I've still been more concerned about Mason Mount's well-being over the last six months. Wherever Kate Middleton is, Mason Mount was there as well. But where, ladies and gentlemen, do Liverpool and where do Manchester United go from here? Obviously, a final chance, really, at Silverware for United this season. They're in now to the final four trip to Wembley now for the FA Cup semi-finals. This is really an opportunity to save their season, truthfully, because if we're going to be honest, it's not been good enough. They've not played nice football. They've been knocked out bottom of a Champions League group. That wasn't even difficult. I don't know. You never know. I, I don't think they're truly in the race to finish in the top four, especially after recent results over the last couple of weeks. So I think Europa League is pretty nailed on. If he doesn't end the season, well, if they don't come away with any silverware and, you know, he was to maybe finish sixth in the league, for example, I think serious questions would need to be asked and I think he'd be under massive pressure already before a ball's even been kicked going into next season. This genuinely does keep things alive and I think the manner in which United did it as well, you've got to be gracious in defeat sometimes, yeah. We were not good enough in certain aspects and they had the fight to keep going. The likes of Alejandro Garnacho running about for 120 minutes. The guy trained twice this week because he's had a hamstring injury. And then on the flip side for Liverpool, obviously still, you know, a strong season. It could end with a treble. You know, so we can't, still can't really complain, ultimately. You know, winning a quadruple in this modern era seems like it's going to be impossible, even though we came so close to it before. We were kind of close to it again this time. Carabao Cup's in the bag. We were four minutes away from an FA Cup semi-final here. We're joint top of the Premier League, and we look like favourites in the Europa League. And we still got players coming back to full fitness, but this, we gifted them the win in the end. The third goal, the equaliser for them. Darwin Nunez waffling on the ball for far too long. But in that situation, fam, don't overcomplicate it. You just got to get rid of it, not play a 
a square ball like that. And then with the final goal, what are we doing? Leaving one player back to defend a counter in the 120th minute of the game. I get it. You know, we want to go and win. This is how we won the Carabao Cup with a late corner. I get attacking it, but that that was naive. And I've not seen naivety from Liverpool in ages. So that's why it's frustrating. We threw it away with five minutes to go of normal time and then threw it away with two simple errors in extra time. So it is a shame the quadruple's off. But what do you make of this and who are your favourites now to win the FA Cup? Obviously, we've got Manchester City. we got Chelsea. we got Manchester United. we got... Coventry. Shout out to Coventry, man. This video is not about them, but they need serious flowers for the run that they are on. Absolute cinema. So yeah, shout out to them. I would love to see them in the final. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm gonna cry into my dinner and yeah, pun United, man. Pissing me off, fam. Fuck it.